So we wanted to talk about CX, so some of you have been here a couple years ago when we you know, launched this, but how we've evolved this. So we've taken CX, we're on our fourth major software release today, and we're really starting to talk about data center switching, where we have you know, the capabilities with CX and VXLAN, BGP, EVPN, to start doing what you know, traditional spine leaf designs for the data center with overlays. And so we've really evolved our platforms and the 8000 series of switches. So it's the 8400, the 8325, the 8320. So these platforms have been, as Michael was talking about, we've been over 1,000 customers so far. And we're continuing to evolve our capabilities. But also, we lean on the capabilities of CX where we have full programmability. <coughs> So data center automations front and center. The programmability within CX and our capabilities have evolved and provided lots of capabilities there, as well as VSX live upgrade. So that capability we've been using is critical for data center, critical for core and distribution. And then we look at distributed analytics. So the capabilities of time series database, the network analytic engine, being able to distribute that across the data center and across the core or distribution networks allows for insight in all of the switches where we can dive into depth and history, but also summarize that system, that back up into additional tools like NetEdit and other capabilities in traditional network management systems where you have robust context in those messages that get sent to the management system where that can be then exported into other capabilities, you know, ServiceNow as a solution where we've done export or other ITSM tools. These can all be exported and you can get that context from deep in the system, the full programmability, everything within that state database can be monitored, interrogated, investigated, processed on the system, summarized and set back to the, up to the management tools. And as we look at the capabilities of CX and the full programmability, we're able to use this database capability to enable VSX and VSX Live Upgrade. So we have synchronization across the two switches. So various elements of config can be synchronized within the VSX tool. We worked with one of our you know, key customers who had spent time with dual control plane systems like VSX, and they had a concern where in their experience, they have smart engineers that would often forget to copy the ACL changes across the two members of the system. So you paired core, the ACL change that can be matched and mirrored wasn't copied across where we can enable synchronization to where you make a ACL change in a manner which applies to both cores, we can synchronize that from the primary to the secondary automatically. So we provide some of this operator experience into VSX. I have a so you, question on your VSX here. Is it, uh, is it limited to just a pair or can it grow to three or four switches in a MLAG? Yeah, so we've intentionally designed VSX to remain a pair. And so a pair of switches, you know, you will have different capacities and capabilities, 8400 modular chassis. So you have quite a bit of capabilities and the one use is designed for a pair. So primary, secondary, and so that we've used that to leverage. And then, you know, so we look at that operator experience, then we expanded that with VSX Live Upgrade. So I think it was earlier referenced, and Tom mentioned that Partha's keynotes are great. In the last three Atmosphere events, we've done live upgrades of the core of Atmosphere during Partha's keynote. And there's a hospital in the, in the UK that's doing this in production today. So VSX Live Upgrade allows us to automatically drain traffic from the standby member of the, or not standby, but the secondary member of a VSX pair. So we drain traffic away and move that to the primary, upgrade the secondary, bring the traffic back to the secondary, and then do the same thing on the primary. So by using tools and capabilities in the routing protocols and in LACP, we can automatically take traffic away. So take it out of OSPF by setting max LSA. Or we can go and 
force links into standby state with LACP. And so we can automatically do these capabilities to enable VSX Live Upgrade. And so this has been working well in many customers already. And then as we look at the, you know, kind of continuing the theme of operator experience, we have the network analytic engine. So we've taken the time series database and we have the config and state database. So the system runs off config and state and then we added the time series database on the system. And so now we're able to track various mechanisms within the system automatically. And so this capability allows us to give you root cause insights for what's going on within the system. So you look at things as simple as transceiver health. So transceiver state and TX and, and RX power levels. So we're able to trend this across time and store data and give you insight when you have a transceiver alarm. And you, you can go look at what happened to the power levels across time. Was there any slow degradation indicating potential transceiver failure that's, you know, this alarm means failure of transceiver? Or is it all, you just have a straight cut where it's likely to be a drop and due to fiber being cut in the path? So you can quickly get insight into something as simple as transceivers, but also more complex routing state or looking at application health where we can go and grab ICP SLA scores to cloud systems, track IP SLA results across time, but then also as you see degradation, start running trace outs, check where the routing has changed. And we can run this analysis automatically within the system. So this is all distributed. So these agents are all published on GitHub and they're based on Python. And so there's, it's a programmable capability. Then we have around 70 agents to date and they're all on Aruba Solutions Exchange. So with this capability, it's flexible and we've been using it with many customers to go and expand this. And then we'll walk through one of the use cases where we've used and demoed the capability of NAE within a data center context where we've integrated directly into vCenter. And so we've been using this as a way to automatically program VLANs on a top of rack. So when we look at the you know, data center and workloads being moved between leafs or a new host is added, you know, migration. So you can migrate a new workload over to a set of hosts <coughs> that haven't had this workload before. And with NAE, we can connect and communicate with vCenter we can see that there has been a move of a workload with a new set of VLANs onto a new leaf. <clears throat> and then so with NAE, we're able to go and reach out to vCenter and then program the additional VLAN capability onto that new leaf based on APIs. So full programmability APIs and being able to do this really allows us to start automating workload moves across new hosts in a, in a data center. So this automation enables the you know, administrator of the virtual machines or the workload to migrate workloads without directly impacting or discussing with the network team this is all be set up. And so we can automate and decrease that time where the network team is involved. And so now we're going to pass this over to Les to kind of discuss NetEdit and NAE in detail. One, one quick question. Yes. On that last slide, the automated, uh, what was it, automatically supports VM moves. Uh, with the, so do you have some control as a network team over allowing that sort of thing to happen or within confines or putting, you know, sort of Limit. gates around that? In other words, you know, you know, some of us live through, you know, like the, what is it, the virtual Nexus switch that plugged in and, you know, letting system admins take over networking functions to move things with their, you know, and that didn't actually work so well. Um, so I like the idea of it. I'm just curious if you have any control over that or if it's something you flip on and it just can happen now. 
Yeah, so the way this has been done is, so these are, it's a Python programmable script. So you have the confines to go in there and specify which range of VLANs or which types of workloads can be automatically provisioned or moved. So the set of VLANs or the, um, you know, can be determined within the script so that it's automated. Okay. So you have that control. So on the VMware side with like NSXT for your VTIP endpoint, you can you can you can allow them to control which egress point, or do you dynamically just do the? So I mean, in the case of NSXT, NSXT will be overlay where it'll integrate directly in. Right, but do so, you fix the VTIP endpoints on each one of the right for failover? Right, if you're trying to actually egress out for layer three traffic, as a default gateway out of NSXT. That script need, isn't. You need a v, you need a VTIP endpoint to egress out of. Yeah, so this is more around direct host integration and not looking at NSXT integration. Okay.